Okay, so today we'll get deep into solar energy, another renewable energy source. Solar energy is you know is in the name. We're trying to harvest energy from sun. So what's going on in the sun? So we've got thermal nuclear that's heat okay nuclear meaning like your atomic structure right inside there's a core and we call that nucleus and that's going to fuse okay uh, with other nucleus and two nuclei fusing is going to create some form of uh, reaction right so that's what's happening inside of the sun right and also uh, on its surface right the whole thing it's kind of like you can see the sun as a molten right melting uh, with incredible amount of temperature right in there yeah so from sun all the way to earth so where's my hand okay so from sun all the way to earth here okay so what we got is we get the radiation yeah heat radiation of course it's not curved like that so <laughs> this way so anyway, so that's we call that photons, right? Sun's photons. And we call light rays. So the energy, right, from sun comes in the ray, and that's rays of photons. And we also call it the heat, right? Radiation. And it's a very powerful, powerful uh, energy because without that we won't have any kind of light formed on the earth. Okay? Uh, it's very interesting because these light rays are like they can travel like very very fast or right? velocity, which is we write it in a little c. Okay, that's the velocity of light, very fast, right? And the distance, as you know, is so far away here, yeah? from here all the way, and we measure the distance in light years. So from sun to earth, it's about like 91 million right miles away, and one light year is about six trillion miles away. Um, so if you want to write right the distance from here to here, that goes with the decimal right number in light years. So whichever way that you want to write, because you don't want to write like 91 right million miles. So if you use like with the decimal right uh, point, it's easier to handle. Yeah. Okay, so what's in the sun ray? So we've got visible light, we have infrared, we have ultraviolet, we have X-ray, and also the radio waves, okay? So go back and review your physics. So solar energy I want you to always remember electromagnetic, all right? And if you remember this, I'll be very happy. So what's electromagnetic continent, right? That's this, okay? We have energy and we have wave length. And this is the distance, all right? That we measure for each wave. Even if we see the light as wave, all right? We have different parts, all right, in the sunlight. So we have X-ray part, we have UV part, we have visible light, we have Sun's energy, right? Spectrum, infrared, radiation, microwave, and radio wave, right? You carefully look at the chart, electromagnetic chart right here. You can see short on this side, long wave on this side, okay? And here, these are the numbers. It's going with a nanometer. And look at that kilometer, right? So pay attention to all of this. So if I ask you radio wave, you've got to know that's a long wave. If I ask you X-ray, then you know, right? Uh, short wave, visible light is right here. Yeah. So the rainbow, right? Every time they touch the water, okay. So after rain, you're gonna see rainbow. So that's come from the visible light uh, spectrum, yeah. Color spectrum. Energy, solar. Energy intensity. So let's take a look at the numbers. So we have 1372, right? That's from the sun and filter through the atmosphere, which is our Earth atmosphere. So 
So we have Earth, and we have Atmosphere, or right, Layer. So it's going to come from your Sun, right? Coming out, 1372, what, per meter square? This is just an area unit, okay, meter is supposed to be like this. So, meter squared. Here, okay, this, somebody forgot this. So anyway, it's filtered through the atmosphere, and then at the surface of the Earth, we got 1,000 watts, right, per square meter, of course, measuring in area, and average is 345 watt, right, per meter square. So that's the solar energy intensity. So we have air, clouds, rain, haze, all right, they're going to reduce, okay, uh, this value, okay, average value. Uh, capture is from heat, so heat again is your thermal energy, and we also use the photo, voltaic cells, all right, and these are for yielding the direct electrical energy, right, so this is nothing but the uh, solar panel, yeah. So we're going to capture that in the solar panel, the sun energy, okay, and then we will generate electricity, okay. This is a conversion of the sun energy into electric energy, okay, by using the cells. I already told you the sun is located about 93 million miles, all right. And we can put it into meter, it's just like making it a little, all right, uh -huh. compact, all right. Every time we use the uh, um, 10 to the power, right, this is all plus 11. So we don't have to write like million miles, right. Instead, we can get rid of this and then write just meter unit and then compact the numbers, yeah. That's all about SI system was born because we want to compact the numbers that we use. So anyway, that's from Earth, okay, to Sun, the distance, diameter, 1.39. These are just your review from your um, high school or middle school. 10 to the power 9 meter, yeah, in miles, 860,000 miles. So that's pretty big, yeah, very, very big on um, Sun, yeah. So the surface receives about 47%, okay total solar energy, okay, so the sun is going to give you radiation, and we're going to get your elect this electromagnetic radiation come to the surface of the earth, so that's about 47% we got it, okay, and we can use it, that's the usable amount, yeah, the rest of them, 100 minus 47 loss in the space, okay, speed of light, I already told you, C, Okay. This is the value. It's going 2.998 times 10 to the power 8 meter. Okay, every second. So that's very fast. You don't have to remember all of that. It's fast. You know, if you know the speed of light is very fast. And if you want to know in miles, that's like 670,000 miles per hour. Okay. All right, so the energy intensity here is a little cartoon diagram. So this is our sun transmission here. You have transmitted all the rays, 70%, okay. Here absorbed into the atmosphere. We have about 24% direct, okay, solar energy. And scatter is reflected bounce, all right, from the atmosphere into the space, about 25%, okay. So in the atmosphere, we have 9%, 6%, all right, 9%. So that's just all scattered out. So use for energy is only 47% on the surface, okay? It's just a cartoon. It's giving you a joke. <laughs> he was just saying, like, oh, the solar power, right, change the war. This one makes me feel like less guilty about deforestation.
Okay, so why do we want to use solar energy? So solar energy is pretty safe, right? Because all of the chemical reaction, radioactive, right, pollutions, all of these byproducts left, okay, with the sun over there. So they all come to 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 Earth, okay? So they all stay right here. So we've got only pure right radiation, which is your radiant energy, get to the surface, right? 47 of it, percent of it. So the energy reaching the Earth, okay, is very intense. So 30 days of sunshine, straight sunshine, okay, striking the Earth, it's going to give you energy equivalent, all right, of all the planet fossil fuels combined. So that powerful, right? Of course, we don't get 30 days sunshine, right, every day. We don't get that. We have cloudy days, we have rainy days, snow, right? All that's going on, windy day. So, um, but what it's telling you is it's powerful, yeah? It's very, very powerful, and we should use it because of the sun energy. All of us are living, okay? Trees, animals, and us. Because if you get rid of this, we're dead, yeah? It's going to be pretty cold. This is just a cartoon, so you want coal, we own it, yeah, we own the mines, you want the oil and gas, we own the wells. You want nuclear energy, oh, we got the uranium, you got solar power, oh, we own the what? You don't own the earth, yeah, solar power is infeasible. Yeah. Then, as usual, we're getting into advantages, disadvantages, your pros and cons of advantages far from the utility power lines. Okay, costly to extend lines. So that's one advantage if you use, okay, solar. Provide backup power during utility outages. We can use as backup. Minor glitch, backup might be only for two minutes. Okay, oh, that's pretty good. Hurricane line damage may need two weeks for right, to repair, so you can compare that efficiency, okay? Clean, renewable energy, and we have no carbon dioxide emission, right, into the atmosphere. Self-satisfaction, right, using some free energy, because you don't have to pay electric bills, you know, if you change into solar. Disadvantages, sun does not shine every day, right? Not consistent. So solar energy is a diffuse source, okay? So to get it, we're gonna concentrate, right? It into an amount and also form that we can use. Okay? I'm gonna highlight that for you. So we, as heat or electricity, we can um, harness the solar energy and turn it into either heat or electricity, what we need. Very challenging, very expensive, all right? Uh, today, technology, we're in the trial stage, okay, right now. Uh, some homes want to go into solar, right? And they're trying. So trial period right now, experimental, right? Uh, three important factors, okay? That's collection, conversion, solar energy, and then how are we going to keep it so we get it constantly? Okay, these are just application listed here. We use them in fabrics, right? Panels, solar skins, okay? Solar power roads, floating solar farms, you name it. Yeah? Okay, then we'll get into harnessing the solar energy. And we're gonna use it in applications. So solar energy applications are, generally we classify them into active, passive, and then photovoltaic, okay? These are just the approach, okay, approach in the application when we design the system. So 
so actively harnessing the solar energy. So active applications, we you know they are usually concerned with the harvesting heat energy. Okay, heat energy. Um, and we use the solar um, collectors, okay? So that's just a part in the system. And of course, since the NAIR active, okay, it is an active mechanical components, right? They are uh, like pumps, okay? Um, extraction of the energy from the sun, and we use the active mechanical components. And then we collect it, and then we transport that as heat, okay, to um, heat your own house. So here, heat the house, okay, radiators or force air duct is here, and here is your collector right there, okay, and uh, we're going to connect it to our house system for, um, this is a water tank, okay, that's what we always need, right, for shower, for bath, right, and this is just a heat exchange unit, okay. Um, so that way we can be able to apply for heating okay, the house. Okay. Then active solar energy applications all right, use mechanical means. Okay. I'm going to highlight it here every time you think about active you have to remember at least mechanical right, components. And it's going to transfer solar radiation okay, to useful power. It is not irradiation, it is radiation. Actually, I'll change it later. So solar connectors or solar cells come in many designs. Okay, So different design we have now, and we use in a variety of different applications. Okay, But you know that. So solar collectors. Right, I'm going to use the solar energy and then we're going to produce the electricity. So, this word collector, right, is the one very important because it's turning the solar energy into electricity. So, when you think about the solar cell, they're like mirrors or glass plates, right, and they have very high reflective. Uh, reflectivity okay so here like and strike and then reflect back and they are multi-layer and they have absorber right under the surface and that is going to collect right the uh, sunlight and store it in the battery so we have two types one is a flat plate which is this one and then the through shape I'm going to show you collectors this is going to turn the solar energy into electricity. So we've got flat plate and we have through okay, shape. Um, through shape is a little bit different. Okay, um, they have kind of like they have like a parabolic right uh, design like this, and the other one is a flat plate collectors, which is complete. This is what we used to okay. interactive solar application diagram and you can see collectors are here flat surface it's going to go into here and this is your heat your gas electric you know whatever you want to use applications and it's connected that way okay uh, we've got a pump right here which is connected to the electricity coming up and run the pump right and you can do cold water into the heater Right, and warm the water or heat the water, and we can use that. Okay, so this is the connection, right? And of course, in for cold, um, for cold season, winter, right? You need an antifreeze solution. Okay, connected to it. Okay, so. We're going to put the solar energy in use. So, uh, what we do primarily is, you know, like for heating the house and also heating the water. Okay. Anyway, when we say heating the house, the most important thing is to get the heat, heated water. Okay. So you can wash the dishes. You can um, um, 
take shower and bath, right? That's very important. So flood plate collector, all right? It's gonna absorb the sun's energy and then we're gonna heat the water. So it's a very simple system. Okay, we don't have to know the entire thing. All we have to know is the sun ray hit. Okay, this cell, we have the absorber collector. Okay, turn that sun energy into electric uh, city and heat the water. Okay, this one of course, so when we say like, oh, it's just heating the water, so things are happening right here. Okay, inside of it, cell system. So the water circulate throughout the closed system. Okay, so um. We're using the convection, all right, currents for the water motion, and you need it. This circulating water is going to go through the system to get heated, okay? So tanks of hot water, that's, you got to store the heated water in the storage, and we use the tanks. So solar water heating system, they save about like 1,000 megawatts, right, right here, energy every year. So that's pretty good. So that's equivalent to eliminating the emission, all right, from two medium-sized coal-burning power plants. So that's pretty good, yeah. So by using this kind of system, all right, solar water heating system over your gas, all right, water heater or electric, uh, water heater a family you can save about like 12,000 pounds right of pollution every year so that's a good thing for the environment so that's why government is giving you incentives right tax cut and all that for you and encourage to install right go uh, electric go solar right to do that Okay, so the market for solar collectors, they grow, right? Uh, they've been growing since 1980, okay? That's one thing is because the fuel, all right, price going up, and then we also get the tax credit, so therefore we wanna, right? We wanna turn over to solar. So if we don't have the tax credit, okay, or the fuel prices, okay, the fuel prices were lower, then um, you don't wanna, you don't wanna do this solar, yeah? Because it would be just like uh, uh, spending extra money for it. So what it's saying is that it just depends on the market, okay? What's going on with the tax, what's going on with the fossil fuel price, and the solar market is going up and down. Solar water heating, okay? still in the United States very low, but other parts of the world, okay, like in Israel, they're using it like 65%. Because they have a lot of political, right, disturbances in their country that is destroying the uh, town and everything. So um, it's better to go solar, okay, in these regions. And it's very economical, right, way of heating water. Passive. So passive solar system is a bit different from active. So let's see what the difference is. So in this system, um, we have okay, the flow of the solar energy, right? And it is passive because it is by natural process, like the free convection, okay? And women, okay, using this passive solar, right? Since like way before 350, okay, before Christ. So it's an ancient, okay, uh, uh, way of setup, but we use technology now to recreate it, okay? But when you carefully look at the design, okay, we, we can be able to, all right, uh, heat it by using the passive solar heating, and it's going to go into the cell right here, you know, right, as usual. You can also use a window directly that's passive okay and here is the solar all right heat 
collection is happening right here on the roof. Okay, it also get collected through the window. Okay, so and you will be connect right, Con connecting this um heat absorption right to your solar heating uh, tank right there. Okay, and we also have a floor heating. Okay, see, which is completely integrated in the floor of the house, right? And that is connected, okay, um, to the heater, right, right here. So that's called the passive solar heating. So if you think about the active solar and passive solar, what is the main difference? So passive build by the design, okay? So passive system, uh, this system structure, you design it, okay, in a way to optimize, all right, the use of heat or light directly from the sun. For active system, you have already, okay, understand how we convert the sun energy, okay, into directly into more usable way like heating, okay, like the hot water, heating the water, or generating the electricity, okay. For passive, it's like, uh, it's completely based on the design, okay, of that uh, system, right, or placement of that system, you know, how you place your uh, house or structure, right? How you place your stuff, um, depending on the uh, direction of the sun, okay? So that's a passive. So you have to know the heat or light. You get it directly from the sun, all right? So again, just remember the design for passive, okay? And for active, like we directly harvest the sun energy to use, okay? Uh, it's kind of like honestly more usable form, right? From the sun is more, more on the active site, okay? Here is like, doesn't matter where you're hitting, you you are taking it as it comes, depends on your design, okay? Very subtle, so pay attention uh, to the difference. Okay, so passive solar energy here, passive system different, okay, different from active system because they use no mechanical intervention, not direct right, uh, turnover to distribute the energy, but rather rely on the radiation, okay, from the sun and the free convection, okay, of the sun. So I just go by the passivist design and activist you turned, okay, you convert directly. All right, so passive solar system generally, okay, they, they pose, they pose, um, five components, right? So these systems, they have collector arrangement, absorber, and then they have thermal mass, and then they have distribution protocol and uh, control strategy, okay? Just remember these parts. You can really see mostly you always see in like the flat surface of the solar panel, but anyway, so the kind of small, yeah, underneath of that. Okay, so passive collectors and passive solar energy, they're primarily the windows, okay? And then your open spaces. And these are very important to let the sunlight in, okay, into your own structure or your house or commercial places. And an absorber to harvest the uh, sun energy, it's just the hard surface. But then it has a very high absorptivity and um, we make it in a way so that is in the direct path of the solar radiation okay entering the collector so we can be able to get that sun energy so again i'm going to point that out the direction all right matters the design matters in passive solar energy so the thermal storage masses, okay, this is just the storage, right? Um, and it's a little bit tricky, so pay attention that so during the winter time, okay, we receive the energy for solar radiation. Um, so passive thermal storage masses, okay? During the summertime, when we have plenty of sun, right? We block them, okay? 
kind of like you would understand this like insulation, right? Uh, keep the sun energy and then um, you don't want to lose it from the storage masses, right? We keep it right here. So it's very efficient in winter time. During the summertime, you don't need it because you've got plenty of sun, right? And even by using a window is enough. And so storage masses, right? During the summertime, we block them, yeah? Continue past the solar energy. So the distribution, all right, it, uh, it's just a method. Your heat energy is going to be stored, and then you're going to retrieve it, right? And then you're going to circulate it to different areas of your uh, structure or your place that you want to uh, use the solar energy for. So controls, we use the controls to enhance the distribution of that, right? Solar energy um, from the collector, okay, absorber in that solar panel. And then we're going to turn that into heat, which is your thermal mass arrangement, okay? Again, don't forget, passive is for design. Okay. So when we design a building and we want to rely on the solar energy, okay, the best design uh, is to act, right, as a solar collector and also storage unit. So your windows, windows, and windows, where are you going to put the windows? It's got to be in the direction of the sun. So that is achieved by, okay, looking at the insulation, right? So you want the, you want your house to be insulated. So you got to put the insulation and that insulation got to be in the sun direction, collection, and also storage, yeah? Efficient uh, heating starts with proper insulation, okay? If your insulation sucks, then it's not going to be good because it's not going to hold the heat in that insulation system, yeah? So your external walls, your roof, and then your floor, it's got to be perfectly, okay? Or nearly perfect, right? Insulation got to be there. So the doors, the windows, the vents must be designed to minimize the heat loss, okay? We want the heat in, we don't want the heat goes out. Yeah. So therefore, design matters. Okay, collection. For collection, in passive solar system, right, depends on the direction. So south-facing windows, north-facing windows, okay. And appropriate landscaping you don't want to put it right right behind the valley or right behind the mountain okay not like that um to the west or to the east or not or south okay it depends on uh, your location and the uh, sun direction okay you don't want a lot of trees right around you okay storage and uh, thorough mass right they hold the heat Okay, so passively heated homes, right, use about 60 to 75 percent of the solar energy uh, hitting the wall and also the window. Continue with our heating living spaces. So the Center for Renewable Resources, they estimate, right? So in any climate, right? If you have like a well-designed passive solar home, you can reduce energy bills about 75%, okay? Uh, construction costs, right? If you think about the construction costs and minus that, so you get a profit about like five to 10%, okay? All right, so the major factor, right? That we don't want to use the solar heating is because of the low energy prices okay because you don't want to spend extra money uh, into buying a solar system because if you have like a low energy prices then you just go you know like what you used to and not bother about a new system you yeah? know costing you more money
solidification, we're going to collect the sun array heat. Uh, then we're going to store it, okay, and the structure or design, carefully designed, right, uh, system. And then we're going to release, meaning that we will prevent, okay, we will prevent that heat, uh, the store heat, okay, from loss. Okay, so passive cell applications. This is the same picture, right? Well, showing you the five elements of passive solar design. And you have your summer sun, you have winter sun. If it is winter sun, it's lower than the summer sun, so therefore you are going to collect by using the windows, summer sun directly from the roof, okay? And uh, these are designed uh, structures, so you have your floor, okay? Your insulation, right? So these are all your absorption and also storage, okay? And distribution, of course using a you know, natural convection. All right, another picture showing you the passive solar application, the same thing, we use the sun, all right, direction, we're gonna capture it, right, collect the heat, and then we're gonna store it, okay, in a uh, carefully designed structure, your insulation, okay, your design, and we're gonna keep that heat inside, okay? We don't want to, um, we don't want to lose it, okay? So heat loss, we have to prevent it. So all the passive soil application, they prevent by good design. And what are we preventing? We're preventing the heat loss, okay? All right, the last one is your photovoltaic solar system. So that's a little bit different, okay, from the active, like direct absorption and conversion into um, electricity or heat, passive design, all right, truck the heat from the sun in a particular design so you will not lose it. And the last one is your photovoltaic, okay. This system refers to the direct, okay, generation of the electricity, so by solar radiation. The most widely recognized right, form of solar energy is your photovoltaic systems, okay? So when you take a look at the cell, you see the flat plate collector, okay, here. And here, this is your uh, inlet, all right, for connection. It's going to go to wherever your heat is going to get supplied or electricity is going to go in, okay? And if you break it down into parts, then you can be able to see the surface, yeah? And the cover is gonna protect, okay, the cell. This is your collector housing, it's just a case. And you usually make that by aluminum, okay, uh, alloy. So this is just a protection for the cell, so you can be able to uh, use the internal part, okay, longer time because all these uh, solar panels sits also in the environment, okay, in rain or snow. And your insulation is in the bottom, connecting the collector. And your absorber is right under the surface, okay? So you can see all the layers, okay? All right. Photovoltaic solar system, we're going to continue. You're going to convert the solar radiation to electricity, right? As you know, every time you have to deal with the radiations, it is always at the atomic level. So electron, okay, in the valence bond, in the atom, okay, they're going to concentrate in a semi-conductive material. So what we're doing is like you are, so many times I'm trying to tell you, okay, at the atomic level, we are activating the electron. As soon as electron is activated, electron is going to move. When the electron is move and flowing, you got the current, and that's your electricity. Okay, so that's what we're seeing right here. All right. Okay. 
So let's take a look at the solar cell photons from the sun. We're going to hit the solar panel and we're going to absorb that photons, all right? And what do we use? We use some my conducting material, adjustment material, and they can be able to absorb the photons, okay? Example, silicon. The electrons, these are your activated, okay, negatively charged electrons. The one with the minus, you yeah, know, that's just annoying. So they're knocked loose, all right, from the atoms and then allowing them to flow through the material, this material, and then produce electricity, okay? So in other words, making the electron flow, as the electron flow, you got the current, and current is your electricity because they have energy, the movement, okay? The movement of the very, very tiny particles that you cannot see are strongest, right? They are the strongest. And uh, an array of the solar cell, right? I'm going to convert the sun energy into the usable energy, which is your uh, electricity, okay? And of course, that's a DC, meaning like we're directly converting into the current, okay? The one that I told you when I was talking about the active and passive, all right, system producing, you know, like direct electricity, okay? Um, that is a very important uh, system and effective. Okay, so semiconductor materials, they absorb the certain wavelengths, right? The shorter, don't forget the spectrum, so shorter on this side and the longer on that side, the shorter the wavelength, right? You got the greater energy. Ultraviolet, your UV, okay? They've got more energy because they are short, yeah? Wavelength, light. Okay. Crystalline, silicon, they utilize, all right, the visible spectrum. They also utilize the infrared radiation, okay? Your visible spectrum is around in the middle. Yeah, don't forget the chart. And then make it a material for solar cell. This is just trying to tell you like what we use for solar cells. So here, photovoltaic cell, right, get more and more popular, right? More popular than the active and also the passive design. Um, because uh, it, it's a direct okay uh, conversion okay so inside of the cell uh, this is what you're going to see so this is outside okay we have a solar arrays here and we have electric color transmission system and then you capture and then you transport okay from poles to poles to your residence and uh, commercial places so inside of this we have glass cover and we have transparent negative terminal Right, in the positive terminal, and this is where you're gonna uh, break, okay, the atom and um, from coming coming from these uh, materials, and then we're gonna get that electron flow. Yeah, this is just telling you, you know, like what type of uh, layer for this semiconductor, and that's just your physics review, your n time and your p time, right? And this is your junction, because every time you have a two terminal, well, you always have a junction, okay. Because this is where you have to separate the positive and the negative charges. Okay, now we can see inside what's going on. Okay, electrons coming out, holes, all right, filled by the free electrons, like that. So that's happening inside of these materials. Yeah. Okay, so what are solar cells? So thin, okay, wafers, looks like thin wafers, but they're made of silicon. And they look like, of course, computer chips. Of course, they're bigger than the chips. And of course, cheaper, even if it's still expensive for us, but uh, compared to the chips, cheaper. So silicon is abandoned because they're just sand and we can uh, make, yeah? They're not toxic, they're safe, so that's a good thing about using this material. Light carries the energy into that cell, right? And then this panel is going to convert sunlight, okay, into electricity, yeah? Uh, different from the passive because system, because we do not store the energy we use directly, all right? And sunlight is your fuel, of course.
Okay, so photovoltaic system, when you take a look at them, they come in different sizes and different functions. So we have a two or any classification. One is a standalone and the other one is grid. Connected, standalone is not connected and you can use it individually. Grid is, of course, connected to the grid. So that's more of a utility, okay, uh, more of a business type. So functional uses, we have systems, we have hybrid power systems. Sorry, system with battery storage. We have hybrid okay, power system. We have system connected directly to the grid. Okay, and uh, for business, it's your utility power, right? Production. These are new businesses coming into remote area because each individual, right, cannot be able to afford it. So the businesses gotta go in. And that's a new market for them uh, to supply the electricity. So even though we're thinking about the solar. Uh, they're going to turn the remote area into like electric bill because you still have to pay the bill uh, because you don't have the system to harvest the solar energy, okay? We are reading a chart and you can see from 2000 all the way to 2017, okay? So we're looking at the world solar power, power production, yeah? So the trend is like that, okay? So that means that uh, this business is growing, you yeah? know? We're using solar power more and more and more. And we have the different countries listed here, you yeah? know? Europe and then uh, America, China, okay? And we can be able to understand like global annual, right? Power production, okay? Or the... Uh, our photo okay voltaic installed this is just a cell right period is a cell that we call abbreviation so these panel install capacity increase so this is a calculation in mathematics about 29 percent going up yeah color coded so these colors again just pay attention to where they are yeah so if you look at this so this is Every time you read the data, you always go biggest and the smallest, right? So that's China, yes? China, right? And then um, this little one is here, okay? MENA. So M E N A. And this is the A P A C. That's just the abbreviations for the different regions of the world, okay? You don't need to remember all of it. All you have to understand is so where to look at, okay? How to understand the trend going up or down going up or going down, okay? Who is doing the most, okay? That's about it. You don't have to remember all of the name. And you with PV, so photovoltaic systems. So this is just a solar farm. So that's the Kamuthi Solar Facility in Tamil Nadu, that's in India, okay? So they have, it has like about total generation. This is 648 okay, megawatt. So they're converting like 2,500 acres. Okay, that's like 10 square kilometer. And they have about 2.5 million solar panels right in there. Yeah. So it's a very uh, big uh, project for India. So they make the power and use it for 750,000 people there. Yeah. They completed the solar farm in 2016, and they spent it like $679 million, okay? And they did it in like eight months, yeah? So meaning like it's not that difficult to build, yeah? So you gotta clean the plant, your facility, okay? That's important, and they're using a robotic system, meaning like automated cleaning, okay? So you don't have to pay the labor fees for cleaning the solar panels, yeah? They can absorb, but if you clean, it's better, yeah, absorption. Because you get rid of the debris on top of it, your uh, daily dirt aren't. We're going to continue our PV. So the next one is a Long Yanzi solar park. So that's in uh, China, it looks like, yep. And 850 okay, megawatts, 200,000 household, and that is in a Tibetan all right, plateau, and they put it right in there. And some form of, uh, I think, 
um, this is a province, okay, it's just a region, maybe they got the sun, right, um, that are at that region, Quan Hai, I, get, I think how to pronounce this, and it's operated, right, state power investment corporation, so that's by government, and this is one of the top five power generators, all right, for China, so phase one completed in 2013, phase two, they did it in 2015, all right, the total construction was about like 920, all right, million dollars. Okay, we continue PV systems. So the next one is the uh, Kern, okay, Kano Solar Park. So that one is, okay, 5,932 acres. So that's like about 24 square kilometer. And this thing is in, okay, Kano uh, District, Andhra Pradesh. So that's in India, right? And they have about like 1,000 megawatts construction, about $1 billion. Yeah, dollars. So 4 million solar panels are there. They install in that park and they can go 315, right? Uh, off 320 watts. Sunny days, sunny days are good for solar. And they can generate about 8 million kilowatt hour. And that's like, okay, uh, good for uh, for the Kanu right, district. So that's the district in India. Continue with the PV all right, system in Mexico. So that's the state of Coahuila, right? Uh, this, in this facility, 2.3 million solar panels. Okay, 2,400 hectares of the ground that we use, 1,700 okay, gigawatts power that you can get. And completion, all right, they finish it 2018. Of course, at that time, the tax were, uh, was written right before this, so therefore expected. So, Annal Group invested approximately $650 million, okay construction of this solar plant and that plant is um 41 percent completed okay at that time of the book textbook okay and that's like equivalent to 310 uh, million words okay at the answer group uh, there's a villain right i think it's already finished Okay, so Tanger Solar Park is another right um, solar plant. Okay, in Ninja China, so they have the largest PV plant. Uh, they call it the Great Wall of Solar, and that is built in a desert. Okay, in Tanger Desert, covering 3.2 percent of the arid region, and they use like 1,200 kilometer. Okay, uh, and uh, in that desert, and this desert is about 336. 1,700 kilometer wide, yeah? So making the land useful. Okay, so Mohammed bin Rashid El Maktou Solar Park, and that's in UAE. So capacity is 1,000 megawatts, right? By 2020, 5,000 megawatts by 2030, so that's expected. So they want to do the biggest solar power plant in the world, okay? And they want to reduce about 6.5, okay? million tons of carbon dioxide emission by completion, okay? So photovoltaic system and also the uh, solar right, power technology, okay? We can use that to provide the clean energy, okay? And this plan, okay, with the same aim uh, to provide the electricity to the resident of the Dubai, okay? UAE is in Dubai anyway, so, um, so the site, okay, is going to include the innovation centers, okay, also they put the research, or R&D department, okay, research development center, of course, and then the testing facilities, and the solar power, water, right, desalination plant is going to be in there as well.
All right, so the next one is the Baldur Solar Farm. That's a 45 square kilometer in Rajasthan, okay, Jodhpur district. And uh, they have the four phases of that project and to complete it, I think, already in 2,255 okay, megawatts of electricity they can produce. And they became operational in uh, 2019, December. So they use over a million solar panels, right? And about 15% of that okay, plant is operational right now. So this plant, all right, so they think like it's going to be the, okay, well, one, one of the best, all right? This is just telling you like it's going to be the one of the best on solar plant. All right, the next one is a Pavagata Solar Park. They spend about like 13,000 acres, all right, in this district, Tankar and uh, Kanataka, okay? You don't have to know all of this, right? All location stuff. If you know, like, the name, it'll be okay, you yeah. know? Okay, so anyway, so they use this because of that region, right? They got only a little rainfall. So they want to use a very high solar radiation in that region. So all the solar plants, as you know, they're using the regional, all right, uh, uh, solar absorption, okay? So instead of letting the sun ray go useless, we can capture them, yeah? We can absorb that solar energy here. So at the end of 2018, they, they can be able to produce like 2,000 megawatts, right? So 600 megawatts commissioned by the end of January uh, that year, yeah? But at the end of uh, 2018, they got 2,000 megawatts. And they want to go 1,400 okay, megawatt. And they made it, yeah? So starting with 600, and they boosted up to 1,400. So by the end of 2018, they got it 2,000 megawatts production of electricity and they spend about 2.2 billion dollars okay this is just a picture showing you the all right photovoltaic system all right out in the space okay so we have international space system here these are solar panels Hubble telescope using okay stuff so, uh, Providing okay energy and then Mars we use okay uh, the solar energy because nobody is going to go up there to supply the energy so it's got to be a self-sustaining all right energy and we uh, harvest it out of the sun rays okay so they can roll uh, automatic okay automatically up there uh, smart maintenance is also in these devices because they have to repair okay and robotics everything's. Um, Smart is nothing but with a sensor and they know how to repair itself, okay, or maintain itself. So we don't have, because it's very difficult to send the paper up, right, up and down, up and down to do that job. Okay, so currently we have 75% electrical power right and that comes out from coal burning and the nuclear we have acid rain carbon dioxide okay all the bad impacts right by burning coal and we have risk associated with that nuclear right uh, power generation now solar uh, is very economical and also uh, it doesn't produce okay emission so it's good for electricity production and we should go solar for it okay Okay, so the argument, what's going on in the world, the sun provides the power, right, only during the day, because we have 12 hours, day 12 hours, night, right? So we, we can get only like about 12 hours, let's say, but actually like eight hours to, you know, like, uh, depends on the season anyway. 
another thing is 70 percent okay of the energy demand all right is during the uh, daytime hours yeah at night traditional methods right could be used to generate the electricity because we also have like uh, uh, today's design is to store right? okay what you have absorbed so you can absorb and then you can store it okay uh, in the battery and you can use the battery and the next day you uh, absorb the sun again okay so that's another way uh, that we're doing today okay go we, we want to decrease our dependency on fossil fuel yeah because fossil fuel is again finite yeah so energy totally pollution free already told you about that therefore it is sustainable Okay, so the startup money, okay, uh, is still high, very high, okay? We have to pay like about $7,000 even for the residential to get, you know, like about three to 4,000 words, you yeah? know? So that's because of the high manufacturing costs for silicon, you yeah? know, base cells, the solar panels. Fossil fuel production is a multi-billion dollar industry, okay? And is is old market, right? old business and is deep seated in the world politics so you can get rid of this easily yeah okay but then we want the clean sustainable energy yeah emission free you can sustainable because the sun is always there at least um until until the human civilization may extinct we predict or maybe no i don't know but that's in a way 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 in the future so anyway, we want clean and sustainable energy, okay? And we hope that that cost, right, for solar power will one day decrease. Okay, then we'll take a look at California, right, United States solar um, facility in uh, Rosemont. California. So that's the largest solar plant that we have here in the U.S. 13 square kilometers. Okay, about three years to build. 1.7 million solar panels are there, and then we generate 255,000 homes electricity. Okay, that's about 579 uh, megawatts. Okay. Okay, so this one is the last slide, the same thing. We give you some links right here and you can go up there. And you can also Google some more right, videos to support your learning. And we encourage you to do that. Okay, so you can visualize and you can be able to listen what's going on all over the world, right? Rather than limiting yourself with the textbook and our lecture. But for handouts, right, and uh, you definitely need to study your textbook. You definitely need to study, okay, in addition to, of course, watching all good stuff uh, because it's important for your uh, quiz and your final exam. All right, I'm going to end this here.